Hi there, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you would use the point cloud manager, basically this dialog, to set up your point cloud so that you can work with it, get the views, get the um, you know various clouds and classifications ready, and so on and so forth. So this is really your first step in working with Scan Essentials that you load a point cloud and that you work through this dialog to get it set up. So let's get going in just a second. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, we're ready to load a point cloud file now. I'm going to click the File Open button on the uh, Scan Essentials toolbar. This is not the SketchUp file open, so that's an important difference. But um, from here, I can now browse to some point cloud data. I have a real work file in um, on, on, on my hard drive right here. So there's a project file and a project folder. Uh, ignore what's in the middle here. Those two belong together. Depending on where you get your point clouds from, you may have them come in other file formats. And as you can see here on the right, there are other file formats that you can load into this. But I'm going to work with a, a real works file and I'm just going to open that. Now that usually takes a little bit and then you see the ghostly points appear right there. And once you see something, you know, you're good. Okay, let's look at um, kind of the <laughs> my main tool, <laughs> the Point Cloud Manager here. What's interesting about this Point Cloud Manager is a bunch of the tools that you see in here are actually replicated as toolbar buttons there. So you don't always have to have this open. Once you become more comfortable with this, you, you might as well just use your, uh, these, these buttons. But I'm going to keep it open because uh, a few things are a little easier to see here. OK. So let's take a look at the Point Cloud Manager, and I'm going to walk you through a bunch of these features. So first of all, up here you have the um, Point Cloud reference. You have uh, options to you know, change, or load, unload, all of those kind of things. Next, what's interesting is uh, adjusting the display. As you can see right here, uh, they come in with a default opacity, and you can fade this in and out. This is also replicated up there, where I have you know, these little buttons right here from zero to 100%. And as you work with this, you will find that you will, you know, want to hide things, make things visible, uh, change opacity as you go along. And so there's a real big need to, you know, be able to adjust this as you go. The other thing that's useful is this point size. And you'll see it when I kind of scan, uh, zoom in a little bit. You see here at some point these become very thin and I can make them thicker using this slider. I usually like to work with a um, little bit you know, heavier thickness just so that I see what's going on. But sometimes when you have a lot of points, of course, that gets very messy. So again, another one of those things that you may want to um, you know, change while you work on this. Um, the next one, density, uh, you can kind of see a little bit actually I'm gonna move my size down you can see here that stuff fades out uh, while I move around this is really important for large point clouds uh, mine is a preview point cloud so it doesn't have as many points as it could have but you see when I change density of course I retain many of those points so uh, again you know adjust to your liking I'm gonna make point size back to my middle here then you can colorize these, and there are a f bunch of different ways you can color these. One is uh, true color. My scanner does not have true color, so you can't see that. This would be a photorealistic sort of um, representation if that worked. You can do um, by uh, uh, intensity. This means, of course, um, if I have more points in an area, I see uh, uh, you know, more intensity, like here and here. <clears throat> um, can be useful. Uh, station color is useful because you often have multiple stations. I have two in my model and you may want to be able to identify which point belongs to which station. And then there's white in there. White doesn't work very well as it is here, but I'll show you in a second where it's useful. Uh, you can, um, you know, 
uh, color by height, not overly useful in my case right here, and then you can do grayscale. Let me show you with white. One thing that happens with shading over here, you have your, your default shading, of course, but you can also turn on shading that's uh, a normal shading where you get a little bit more surfacey type appearance. You know, with that default, you won't get that even if you have, you know, like these guys here. So um, if you do white and normal shading, that's usually quite useful, but there's other options here too. You see, of course, this ambient and that guy. All right, so I'm gonna just leave it like this here. And then, um, as you can see here, of course, you know, I am on the outside of my building and so I <laughs> can't easily look inside. There are these cloud view options here. You can click this view inside, which basically hides the points that are obstructing your view, as you can see right here. And again, this is really useful as you're working with this, because all of a sudden you can look inside and you can work with the points that you see in there. There's another feature here which highlights edges, which is really great. <clears throat> this is one that um, you could use, for example, if I go here in top view and switch to parallel. I seem to be, no, I'm not, now I'm in parallel projection. <clears throat> you can use something like this um, very easily you know, to identify lines and, and um, do floor plans, outlines, and, and the like. So again, <laughs> depending on your workflow and depending on what you need, you know, switch all of those back and forth as, as you like. Okay, let me turn everything on again um, so that I can show you the next feature here. Clipping box I'm going to skip for now. I'll show you that later where uh, we're going to start modeling and we're going to basically reduce all of this to a, a smaller set of points so that we can work on a section of this. Um, under clouds over here, you see that my cloud has been... Um, categorized in a bunch of different uh, or classified in, in a bunch of different categories <clears throat> where there's a main cloud which is everything and I can turn this off and nothing changes because I still have these sub clouds that you know make up this whole thing but um, within RealWorks I was able to uh, you know uh, classify these automatically which is a really great feature this works for indoors as well as for outdoors uh, so for outdoors this would be uh, ground this would be low vegetation this would be tall vegetation and so on uh, utility lines and buildings and so on and so forth but but for in indoors this is what we get so ceiling floor remaining which is furniture typically and walls but as you can see when i turn this off if i turn off everything but floor and walls, for example, I get, you know, uh, a much easier way to work with this. And if I only want to work with the floor, for example, I can do this now and I have myself the floor. Now, it gets a little interesting when, it, when you have ramps and steps and so on, because at that point, the algorithm doesn't really identify everything as, as floor there. But this is usually very useful to start modeling. So um, if you make your own point clouds, uh, if you have the capability to do that, of course, you want to look for this um, classification option. But if you uh, get somebody to produce a point cloud for you, then, of course, you may want to um, you know, mention this so that they can prepare the point cloud so that it's much easier for you to work with it. All right. So let me turn all of those back on again. And we've got this here. Then, as you may have seen here in my in my um, scan, actually, wait, let's look inside again. There are only two stations that I have. There was one here, and then there was one over here. The two circles, basically. Um, I only did a preview scan for this, so this would not be a real production scan, but it's <laughs> enough points for us to work with. Um, Anyways, you see down here, those are shown too, and I actually can turn on and off the points that belong to each of those stations. Uh, can be useful again to limit view or to you know enable view or uh, all of those. All right. So then, if you go further down here, there's a there's a bit about sections where you can use uh, SketchUp sections. This is something we can cover later a little bit. Um, 
inspection is a tool to verify how good your modeling is as compared to the point cloud. So also something that we're going to work with later. And then you can transform your point cloud. <clears throat> this would typically be your first step. Uh, I did it uh, <laughs> not as my first step right now, but, but just in terms of what's happening, if you look at my origin in SketchUp right here, you can see roughly what happened, which is that the point cloud comes in with the origin at, uh, with its origin being the eye height of the first station. This was my first station right here, um, placed at the origin in SketchUp. This may or may not be useful, and you can, um, you know, at this point here, fix it. So you can basically uh, see the transformation down here. We don't have any transformation, but then I can go up there to my um, toolbar and I can move a point cloud like this or I can rotate a point cloud using SketchUp's usual tools. So this is very nicely implemented, uh, very easy to use and then once you have it placed as you can see here now I've got um, my transformation men uh, mentioned here and I can of course always reset it if I need it and get back to where I was. All right, so there's that, and then there's a few settings done here. But in principle, that's what's in the Point Cloud Manager. And that's typically how you start, you know, setting up your work and your workflow um, with Point Clouds in, in SketchUp. And, and just to quickly walk you through the toolbar, I've looked at a few things already. So the first buttons allow you to load a Point Cloud, to unload a Point Cloud. Um, then all of these here are basically this, you know, visibility part. Because once you start modeling SketchUp entities, you you do need to um, uh, see things. Then next to that, you've got the snapping tool, and we'll use that quite extensively. But you can snap to SketchUp, or you can snap to a point cloud, which is really important once you you know have something, and you may have to you know reach behind the point cloud to snap onto something in SketchUp. Um, in terms of drawing tools, there's a construction point tool and a guideline tool. Those are, of course, not you know, necessarily in SketchUp's tool set, so, so that's why they're here. But you can um, use you know, SketchUp's tool set as you know it, uh, or you can use all of this here. Next is um, this section here about clipping boxes, and I'll show you that in a second, what you do with that. Then we talked about moving and rotating a point cloud a second ago, and then the last few are a great feature to actually make a ground mesh from a point cloud automatically, which is you know creating terrain, and I'll show you that as well. Okay, so that's um, a bit of an overview of the point cloud manager and the toolbar. Um, yeah, for scan essentials.